Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, June 17th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We're still watching Invest 92L in the Gulf of Mexico. Still a pretty disorganized system this morning. Not a lot of change from yesterday in the sense that we have a very broad area within which we can try to identify the center, but it's kind of difficult this morning. NHC is currently putting it kind of down here because very broadly you have these northeasterly winds on the, nor on the north side, maybe very light westerly winds along the coastline of the Bay of Campeche, but in the middle is really just a bunch of calm wind over a very large area. So there's not really a well-defined circulation this morning. But kind of as expected for the last few days, we're watching the northeastern end of this for a refocusing and potentially relocation of where the center is. Broadly speaking, we have a very strong southeasterly moist flow coming out of the Caribbean and across the Yucatan Peninsula on the east side of this. And then this is turning to out of the east and the northeast around the north side here. So really what we have is kind of a broad trough axis oriented southwest to northeast. And we have the flow kind of curving around this northeastern end of the trough. So it's really at this northeastern end of the trough where all this convection is happening that we may start to see the spin up of maybe a new circulation center that eventually may move northward toward Louisiana. Here's the water vapor satellite loop. And yesterday we were talking about how the upper level flow could be modified in various ways as this storm tries to come northward. As we look at the flow today, we'll still see kind of this rotation aloft, this upper level low or trough kind of over top of where 92L is. And we still have this flow coming out of the south and turning to out of the west over the Gulf of Mexico. And this southerly flow has really not altered its direction very much since yesterday. And some of the model forecasts from the last couple days that tried to switch this wind more out of the southeasterly direction have not really come to pass. And so yesterday's GFS runs that kept this flow more southerly or southwesterly seem to be the way things are going here today. And that tells us a whole lot about the evolution of the system today and tomorrow and Saturday. As this comes north, we're going to retain a lot of the southwesterly shear, pushing a lot of this thunderstorm activity off to the east and northeast of wherever the, the center of this ends up forming if we do get a well-defined center. So as this kind of comes north and a new area of low pressure develops in this northeastern side of the trough, we're going to see a track probably into Louisiana here with all the weather kind of on the northeast and east side of that track. And uh, the other side effect of this is uh, we're kind of less likely now to get super heavy weather getting all the way into eastern Texas. Now, I do want to point out that if you look at some of the model spaghetti charts with the trackers from where the model forecasts this to go, again, right now they're trying to center this down here. And some of those trackers do end up looking like it's trying to take it off this way. That's kind of an artifact of how broad the center is right now and how ill-defined it is. Again, we're kind of watching for it to reform up here. And so those tracks are going to be more into the direction of kind of Louisiana, Mississippi, and with all the heavy weather going up into that corridor. So we're not really expecting a whole lot over here at this point in time, but keep an eye on your local NWS forecast for local details. I'll show you here on the model what we're working with. Uh, if we go back to the current time, and you'll see our broad area of rotation here, southerly wind changing northeasterly wind. So we have this trough axis in here. As we go forward throughout the day, again, we're going to see a refocusing on the northeastern end of this trough where all the thunderstorm activity is generating extra vorticity or spin. And you can see that the old center of the broad ill-defined circulation is back here, but this becomes the center of action. And this starts to move north northwestward or northward toward the Mississippi Delta. And you can see that on the GFS, we end up kind of with a new circulation. Something old is left behind down here, east of Mexico, uh, but the main system is up here by Friday evening off the Louisiana coastline. Again, very strong southerly flow on the eastern side, really not much happening on the northwest side. Uh, we might get some of the precipitation extending to the north here of the track, but most of it, the bulk of it to the east and northeast of the center of this new circulation as it develops and moves toward the coast. We can kind of see how this looks on the moisture field, whereas this marches up toward the coast. Again, all the green, all the deep moisture in here, all the rainfall coming on shore with this on the eastern side of the circulation, very dry kind of on the northwest side. Again, a typical early season type of subtropical 
or tropical kind of development where there's really nothing going on to the left of the track and you have this maybe even comma shaped kind of cloud structure where everything is happening to the right of the northward track. If we look at the upper level wind, this is the current setup again southerly, turning to southwesterly over the Gulf, bringing shear. And as this moves northward, the system is going to be somewhere in here on Friday morning. And again, just southwesterly flow through here, uh, strong enough to keep this sheared and to keep dry air uh, lurking on the western side of this and as this comes on shore that doesn't really change so we're not seeing some of those forecasts from yesterday where we get this southeasterly type of flow oops sorry about that this uh, flow is not shifting direction so we're not getting that nice pocket of anticyclonic ridging that some model forecasts had over the last couple of days so we're now really keying in on this being a very sheared type of system very asymmetric as it comes on shore European model not a whole lot different today, uh, showing again this focusing on the northeast side, a little bit farther west than the GFS overall, but that's not uncommon. These two models typically do this where the Euro is a little bit farther to the west, GFS a little farther to the right. So we saw GFS was a little bit more toward the Mississippi Delta, Euro just a little bit farther west here, and then moving on shore into Louisiana and Mississippi. But again, asymmetric structure, everything's on the eastern side here with the strong southerly flow with all the moisture, not a lot going on to the northwest and west of the track. I just want to show you that again, the main impact here is the rainfall and the potential for flooding coming out of this whole situation, regardless of when or if uh, this gets named a tropical or subtropical storm, the impacts are going to really be the same here. And this is the GFS ensemble showing the 24 hour precipitation going forward. And this is for the next 24 hours showing everything over the Gulf of Mexico. And then as we go forward through Thursday, Thursday night, and into Friday morning, we start to see the precipitation encroaching on the central Gulf Coast. And as we talked about yesterday, the focus here, the heaviest amounts are likely to be in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And as we go into Saturday, we can see this large area of potentially heavy precip extending through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Florida Panhandle. And this shifts inland as we head through the rest of the weekend and even into early next week, Monday and Tuesday. And I can show you the official NOAA forecast for the full swath through Tuesday morning, all precip expected kind of extends from potentially Eastern Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Florida Panhandle. Wide swath of more than a couple inches of rain here with maximum amounts in uh, the central Gulf Coast of six inches on this plot. But of course, the way rainfall forecasts work is that it's very hard to tell to local detail where the heaviest amounts will be. So this shows that there's potential for a widespread area of heavy rains, but in certain isolated spots, there could be even heavier amounts than this. And this is why flooding is always a concern because if you happen to be under one of those little rain bands that sits over the same area for many hours at a time, you can get localized flooding impacts. Uh, that are even worse due to 10 or more inches of rain falling in a short period of time. So we'll be watching carefully for, the, for that. Consult your local forecast from the National Weather Service office in your region. You can go to weather.gov and search for that by clicking on the map in your area and uh, keep tabs on the any flash flood warnings or flood watches that are posted for your region. We'll be watching that closely going through the weekend as well as the potential for isolated tornadoes uh, to the north and east of the system as it comes on shore. Some of these rain bands can cause little spin-ups of tornadoes, and that needs to be watched, even if the overall winds with this system are relatively weak. Not expecting a lot of wind here. Maybe 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts along the coast are possible, uh, but really not a big wind event. Talking more about the water here and the potential for flooding. So we'll watch this as it comes north. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.